Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how I set up MA3D. The first thing we're going to do is have MA2 and MA3D open in one machine or another. And then on the Grand MA2 we are going to go to Setup, MA Network Control. I'm going to end my session real quick and we are going to look at our IP options. So you have two options. If you are using MA3D and MA2 on PC on the same computer and you have nothing connected to your Ethernet port, no node or network switch, you're going to use this 127.0.0.1 IP address. Now if you are connected to other machines, like my setup is one machine running MA2 on PC, another machine running MA3D. If you have a console connected, or if you are using MA2 on PC and MA3D on the same machine but are connected to a network switch or a node, then you're going to want to use this 192.168 IP address. 192.168 is the range that MA recommends and if you know you're networking this zero has to stay consistent amongst your machines and this five um, on the last number each of those digits has to be unique for your machine. So this machine is 0 0.5. My MA3D machine is 0 0.2. So once you have this set, if you do not have this these IP addresses available and you would like them to be, go to the control panel, network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, Ethernet, if you have two Ethernet cards make sure you're selecting the right one. Right click Ethernet, go to properties, Internet Protocol version 4, properties, and set your number here. Once you do that, restart MA for it to see that network number, and then once you change it you'll have to restart again for it to take effect. But once we have both of our machines configured, hit create session, you should see it over here and it should send shortly. If it does not send or it's your first time setting up, what you're going to need to do is go to MA Network Configuration 3D, probably hit Add Present, and it should come up gray. And then right click this box that says Session Member and it will go green and everything should send over. You can also add your DMX notes here and other devices. So I'm going to talk a little bit about camera movement. We are about done with MA2. I like to move my camera using the right click button in MA3D. It allows me to shift side to side quickly and I can zoom in with the scroll wheel or the number pad or, or the uh, directional arrows. If you want to reassign this right click camera movement you can scroll your wheel down to panning, orbit, or zoom but I don't feel the need to do that because I can move to the side with this right arrow and then press control and I go to my second camera movement which is pan. And doing this allows me to walk around the stage very easily. You can also hold right click and press shift and that will take you to your third camera movement. I don't know how to get to the fourth camera movement, but I know it's just one scroll up away. So like I said, you could also zoom up and down with the directional keys, and you can hold shift up to zoom down in and out quickly. You can also center click. This will take you to your other cameras that you have available. So you can zoom in with one camera restore to a far away camera and then bounce back to that zoomed in camera. You could also access your two dimensional views here and zoom in and out of those with up and down. But one thing to be advised against if you are using this two dimensional view 
is you should not hit shift up. If you hit shift down, it's kind of okay. You can zoom back in. But if you hit shift up, you will go way too far into your CAD and it is impossible to get out even by hitting, hitting shit, shift down. If this happens to you, go to view, cameras, add the camera angle that got messed up, center click, and then go to that new view. While you're in this view tab, take a look at these windows that I have lit. And if any of them are not lit, please do so now because you're going to need almost all of these. You don't need the arrangement tab right now, but if you want that one, it's available in functions, arrangement. Basically, assets controls all of your cameras, 3D objects, and anything else. Your 3D objects window is just for 3D objects and sprites, basically. Your materials window is for editing textures and how things look. Uh, I've never played with video player. Your media database window is everything for import. Your camera windows are all of your cameras and your properties window handles the position, size, and rotation of all of your 3D objects in your model. So we are going to create an environment real quick. Center click and I can get back to my view. So to make an earth, I like to go to my media database window, go to primitives, go to disk, and set that size to 1000 by 1000. I used to do 10,000, but I found that if I right click off in the distance and go even a couple pixels up, I'll be miles above my gig, which becomes a pain. Select this disk that you made, and decide if you want a desert or a grassland. Go to diffuse color and if you want grassland select this darkest green available. If you want a desert kind of go for this yellowish range. And then for skies go to rendering, go to background color and if you want a blue sky, set this to the darkest blue available. And if you want a desert sky, select the darkest purple available. By the way, you should check out this rendering tab <coughs> and view all of your options you have available. Point light color is the kind of color is the kind of light that's reflective. Ambient color is the type of light that's kind of everywhere. Both of them are a form of your house lights. And then everything, the, your spot intensity, spot type, that has to deal with fixtures once you import them which we will play with later, but we're not going to be importing fixtures in this tutorial. So if you're working in a ballroom, what I like to do is go to Media Database, go to Environment, and import this closed room. It's a little small at first, but size it to the proper size of your room. 60 meters by 60 meters by 12 meters. Set it to just the right height. And what I like to do is take my stage plane and make its position 0 0.02, just so that it floats a little bit above my environment. Take this closed room, and then if you want to alter the textures of it, you can find those in your materials tab. It doesn't have listed which is which, and it rarely will. But if you select each layer and bring in your diffuse color, you can flash it to see what it is. You can see that this is the ceiling, which I'm okay with. It's a beautiful ceiling. I want to change the textures of my wall and my carpet. So I found my carpet, hit change texture, go to local disk, click the three dots on file, and then bring in the smaller size hotel carpet or whatever texture you have make make it a smaller size than it already is 
otherwise it might take up too much room. 366 isn't too bad, but I shrunk it to 150 anyway. For my walls, I'm just going to replace the texture with a color. So I can tell that they're my last four objects in here. Delete that, go to diffuse color, and I'm gonna do a very light amber. Once I do that, I like to set my origin on where I want things to spawn. This is pretty close right here. Zoom out to get the room. This is pretty close, but I want them to form more upstage. And this is why I like the disc, because you can clearly see your origin. So select everything you want to move, not your disc, and then drag the arrow so that your origin places things where you want them to begin. On second thought, I'm gonna have a dance floor there, so maybe right in front of my screen would be a better option. And then click out of that, go back to one of your main views. And once you are all set with your room, click it, go to assets, and make it unclickable, along with your disk. If you're happy with your environment, click these two things, group them together, and then you have an environments folder. You can rename that whatever you want. And you are set with your environment. Now if you're working, if you want to make a custom room for yourself, go to media database and import this gray plane. And by the way, I'm holding control right now to get to that orbit tab. I like to orbit things into position most of the way there, and then I see what number it has to be, and I set it the rest of the way. But I like this gray plane for building walls because it has the same feature as this closed room where you can see the walls from one side, but see through them on the other side. I'm not going to create a room today though because I am happy with my closed room. But another trick I would like to show you is if you are working a festival and would like to more accurately depict where each tree is, where each access road is, and build your set around that, grab a gray plane or a stage plane or a white plane works too. Make the size of it approximately 1920 by 1080 for your screenshot. And then zoom out a little. And raise your One there. What is it doing? Okay, there we go. So I've never had that happen before. <clears throat> so once you have your gray plane, go to materials, go to diffuse color, and raise that up all the way, and then go to texture. And before you do this, go to Google Earth and fly above where you're going to be doing your gig and take a picture of it or take a screenshot in Google Earth. Save that to a photo and then import that photo onto your plane. Now it's a very big file type, so you might want to save some room later on in your CAD, otherwise your load times might get pretty big. But once you do that, you can zoom down into your area and view everything as if you were there. Now to scale it properly, all you have to do is research an item on your picture that you can scale to. I see semi trucks here that I can scale to and this road. So I'm going to use this road. What I'm going to do is find the distance of this road which let's say is 108 meters. 
go to primitives and import a box and then make that 108 meters oh, maybe I was wrong maybe it's 42 meters once you are done with that lower your size to show to fit and then do a little bit of math you have a properly scaled screenshot of your work area and you can place everything down make that unclickable and you are set to go so that concludes this tutorial let me know if I skipped anything or went over anything too fast but thank you for watching have safe gigs and protect your retinas thank you all talk to you later